All right, so we're back with another edition, I guess, if you want to call it that. I don't know. It's sort of like a series on the channel of literally doesn't make sense. We're here to talk about some Final Fantasy VII, but also Crisis Core. And we're here to talk about a, I guess, technically sort of iconic scene. Nobody really talks about it, but the scene where Cloud kills Sephiroth back in Nibelheim years ago. The point of these videos is to look into something from Final Fantasy VII way too much. Like, in the most literal sense we can. People still get upset by these videos. I don't know why. They're just kind of for fun. We've done a couple of these videos. We did the Emerald Weapon fight, we did Aerith's death scene, and we did uh, Safer Sephiroth's supernova attack. So what we're here to talk about is a scene from the original Final Fantasy VII, but also Crisis Core, and we're going to be using mostly Crisis Core footage because it fleshes out the scene better, it came out at a later point, better technology. So what we're here to talk about is a scene where Cloud kills Sephiroth during the Nibelheim incident, where Sephiroth completely destroys Nibelheim and slaughters everybody. Now, obviously, if you played anything FF7 related, you know that Sephiroth is not actually dead. But that is what the rest of the world thinks, and that's what Cloud thinks, because he's the one that threw him down into the live stream. And that's why everybody's surprised to see Sephiroth's sword and President Shinra's back when it came to the original FF7, and why Cloud is surprised to start seeing visions and flashes of Sephiroth when it came to the remake. So the scene doesn't make sense for a few reasons. For starters, the initial encounter between Sephiroth and Cloud. Sephiroth is distracted by Genova in her cell in her chamber. Cloud sinks up behind him with the Buster Sword and stabs him from the back. Well, at least with Crisis Chords from behind, for whatever reason, I just now noticed that when it came to the original game, Sephiroth actually just turns around but still allows Cloud to stab him, which I think makes a lot less sense, which is probably why they changed it when it came to Crisis Core. So why this particular scene doesn't make any sense is the sheer size of the Buster Sword. That's part of why the sword is so iconic, because of its absurd size. If Sephiroth gets stabbed from behind with it, because he gets pierced, he doesn't get cut or slashed, this would cut him in half. If we use the remake as an example, which will probably be the most realistic depiction of the Buster Sword, it's absolutely massive, dude. Even at an angle on Cloud's back, the Buster Sword is still wider than Cloud's torso. And if we compare Sephiroth and Cloud side by side, obviously Sephiroth is bigger, taller than Cloud, but the torsos are roughly the same size. If anything, Sephiroth might actually be skinnier than Cloud. So if we go by the logic of the scene, the Buster Sword is capable of stabbing through Sephiroth's body, the next couple scenes we're going to look at wouldn't even be able to take place because he would be two pieces on the ground. Cloud won already. I mean, even if you're somebody that wants to disagree with me and defend the scene, look how absurd this looks. I mean, stabbing somebody with the bus sword, like my god. But let's move on from there, because that's not even what the main point of this video is. That was just one small thing I noticed that I was able to pick apart like that. What we're going to talk about next is actually what the point of the video was supposed to be. So what happens in this scene is Sephiroth impales Cloud on his sword, the, I've always said Masamune, but looking it up, it's like Masamune or something, I don't know. I, there's a lot of words that we've been pronouncing wrong for years when it comes to FF7. Either way, Cloud gets impelled on Sephiroth's sword, Sephiroth lifts him up, and then miraculously, through sheer defiance of logic and physics, Cloud somehow lifts Sephiroth up, and then throws him. And when it comes to Crisis Core, the scene is relatively the same, of course, just a little more fleshed out. My issues with this scene are, for one, Sephiroth not being sliced in half, but also, how does Cloud even get to the ground? Sephiroth is in a weakened state, of course, but he is still very much capable of piercing Cloud's body on the ground and lifting his dead weight up into the air. Cloud is nowhere near as strong as Sephiroth, especially at this point in his story, because this is before he's super exposed to Mako with Zack and becomes the Cloud that we know now. Anyways, Cloud's up in the air, then grabs the blade, and I don't know what he does, like push downward, which obviously if you were to do that, would just push the blade down through your body, slicing you in half. But anyways, let's move past that. He then proceeds to slowly lift Sephiroth into the air. Sephiroth decides to not let go of the sword for some reason, and just slings Sephiroth off to the side. The obvious biggest issue here is why the hell would Sephiroth continue holding on to his sword? This guy, you just deadlifted off the ground with the end of your blade, fought his way to the ground, started lifting you into the air, let go of the sword, run over there and punch him or something. But instead, we get this. And actually, if you hop back to an earlier scene right before this one, whenever Cloud tries to attack the wounded Sephiroth, he stops in midair, turns around, and slices to throw him into the room where Genova was. If you've played Crisis Core, you know what basic slicing attacks from Sephiroth can do. So that alone probably should have killed Cloud, not to mention him being then stabbed by Sephiroth, which as we've seen in the original FF7, being stabbed by Sephiroth usually kills you. And again, why into this should potentially kill Cloud is because he's just essentially a regular guy. This is pre-FF7 Cloud. He's just a Shinra infantry grunt. He has not yet been super exposed to Mako and been experimented on by Hojo for like four years. 
the one thing that's sort of in Cloud's favor with this scene is whether or not every single member of the Shinra army is exposed to Mako. I can't find a definitive answer on that. Obviously, when it comes to the ranks of soldier, first, second, and third class, as you get stronger and progress the ranks, you're showered in more and more Mako. I don't know if regular infantry members are. I can't find an answer on that. But if so, then Cloud might have had a little bit of Mako in him, which made him stronger than a regular guy. So without a definitive answer on that, or at least I can't find one, we have to assume that he's pretty much just a regular guy. And we know through Cloud's like flashback and his memories and all that stuff that he never actually made it into Soldier. It means at this point in his story, he's actually a pretty weak character because he couldn't even make it into the lowest rank of Soldier, which is Soldier 3rd Class. And we slaughter those guys within the original FF7. Which would mean Cloud is weaker than these guys right here, which means that he's nowhere near Sephiroth's power or strength. So for all the reasons listed within this video, the scene where Cloud quote unquote kills Sephiroth literally doesn't make any sense. Usually with these videos, they're not really planned. It's like I'm watching gameplay or I'm playing the game myself and just notice something that I want to talk about, notice something that I think doesn't make sense. This one, however, I've actually had in the pipeline for a long time. I'm just now getting around to making it though. Something else I noticed while making this video is that this scene right here from the remake is almost definitely like an easter egg or a callback to Crisis Core because the scenes are very similar. Cloud charges Sephiroth out of anger, jumps in the air, Sephiroth stops in midair, and then slices him away. And in this scene Sephiroth says what a touching reunion and as we know this Sephiroth in the remake has knowledge of different timelines so he'd know about the events of FF7 and Crisis Core. But anyways my dudes that is the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you guys aren't even with more Final Fantasy 7 content, turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter at the Dash and David. I'm a Discord. Links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later, guys. Used to care what people thought, but now I care more. And nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending. Depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like old train, we in here. Like low gain or leave it. Like old bang.